Hello everyone and welcome to joining this session. We are Syrian Fashion, Donang Dang, Lukuren and Hulay from Cinnamon AI. Today we are going to present our paper, which is High Service Hybrid Confidence Engine from the Document Intelligence System. Okay, so let's get started with the confidence in AI models, the notorious problem in current AI research. You know, AI models have shown impressive predictive performance on many problems but they are poorly calibrated in terms of confidence. So this problem can be illustrated in this figure one. You can see that for modern architecture such as Pressman, the average confidence of the model is much higher than the accuracy. So we can conclude that current AI model is overconfident on its apples. And to have wide spectrum adoption, we need to know when we can trust the model apples. So there is a lot of mission critical use case that requires steep estimation of the model's confidence. So for example, for a human intelligent system, when the system has to read the input image and extract the relevant information from the, the raw image into the key value output format. So for example, for the text key, if the extracted value is raw, the consequence is extremely terrible and it can affect the business. So it is important to understand the behavior and capture the correctness of current AI models. Okay, so let's move on to the problem definition of confidence estimation for document intelligence system. Document intelligence system, DIS, consists of three information discussion networks or IE networks. The first one is the text line segmentation that takes the input the input image and segment the location of the text line in the image. The second one is the uh, optical character recognition or OCR model. It essentially is CI man and CDC loss function that transcribe the, the image into the text. And after that, we can construct the graph, which uh, where each node in the graph corresponds to each text line in the document image. And the key value prediction, the final model, is implemented by the graph convolution neural network. So this network will classify each node into a predefined graph, for example, copy name or account number. And the final output of DIS is the key value output. So the question here is how confident this output is. So we introduce the confidence score model that output, a confidence score for each prediction in DIS output. This score reflects the likelihood of correctness. We expect that higher common score corresponds to higher chance of this prediction being correct. And so this problem can be formulated as the standard binary classification problem where the model learns to separate the correct and the incorrect predictions. Okay, so before we move into the details of the proposed method, we take a look at the literature. So, confidence score or uncertainty estimation in AI models have a very rich literature where there is many main approaches. For example, the variational inference, Bayesian model, logic calibration, confidence estimator, or out of distribution detector. So, based on the literature, we want to find a solution that can be easily adapted into current existing DIS system. That means we don't need to modify too much on existing model. For example, we, can, we, we, we do not have to rechange the text line segmentation of the OCR model. And there are some criteria we should consider, starting the computational capacity or the type of uncertainty we want to capture when we decide the COVID score model. Okay, so based on this observation, we design a holistic solution that utilizes all sources of information and takes advantage of both confidence predictor and anomaly detector method. So we come up with a graph of the architecture here that consists of two main components, conformal predictor and anomaly detector. So given the current DIS system, we can detect is in we can take different kind of information or feature from the system. For example, the final structure output, the system or the output, or any kind of hidden feature from IE networks. So 
this kind of feature we need the input for the conformal predictor we also obtain the input data for the DIS and from this input we can get some kind of embedded features so this feature we need the input for the second module so a normally detector so a normally detector we output a score in the range from 0 to 1 that indicates whether the input is normal or abnormal to a system so this score will be an additional input to the main conformal predictor and the conformal predictor will uh, predict whether the DIS output is true or false. For example, for the key K1, the, the DIS output is B1 asterisk, and the graph truth for K1 is B1. And so the confidence score model will try to predict whether B1 asterisk is equal to B1. So in other words, the confidence engine here will predict whether the DIS is true or wrong. Okay, so we move into the motivation of the conformal predictor, the first component of our solution. So the paper one, confident prediction for Mexican free OCR. In this paper, the authors attach an auxiliary head to the current OCR model, and this head will predict whether the, the OCR model is true or is wrong. And this approach achieves at least two times a year to compare to other previous methods. So we can uh, utilize this ticket to our conformal predictor. And the paper two and three in this paper, um, the model tried to learn the joint visual and linguistic representation in self-supervised manner. They also try to combine image encoder and audio encoder to recognize the phrases and the sentences being spoken by human. So basically uh, these approaches efficiently leverage the cross modality information that uh, come from uh, different sources of information. We also can use this technique in our model because yeah, our model have many kind of inputs. Okay, so let's move on to the detail of the architecture for the conformal predictor. So basically, it is the multi-model conformal predictor, MCB. So MCB consists of three main branches, which is uh, legal encoding branch, visual encoding branch, and load embedding branch. So based on the motivation, the conformal predictor has um, three branches, which process its own input data that come from uh, different sources of data, where the, the, the input data is extracted from the IE networks, the hidden layer of the IE network. So um, the input for the legal encoding branch is the uh, output of the OCR model, which is the OCR text, and the output will be a vector. For the visual encoding branch, the input will be the CINN logic that capture from the OCR model, and the output is also a vector. So basically, this vector will have the knowledge about the, the district baseline image. And for the not embedding branch, the input will be the, the hidden layer, uh, the last layer representation from the graph convolution neural network. And the output is also a vector the same size as the previous output from previous branch. And after that, we have three output vectors correspond to three encoding branch. And we want to uh, fuse this vector into the final one, final output for our multi-model conformal predictor. So we use the feature fusion module to fuse different kind of signal. So in the simplest form of fusion, we use the concatenation where we simply concatenate three input vector into the output vector. And for the advanced technique for feature fusion, we will uh, discuss about it in the next slide. Okay, so the first advanced technique is bilinear pooling. So bilinear pooling uh, gets the idea from the visual question answering, uh, where they need to combine the signal from different sources of data, for example, from text or from image data. So the data uh, come from different modalities. And in our case, uh, we also have signals that come from image, from image, from text, and from the, the embedding of a uh, neural network. So we apply the binary pooling technique. So basically, the binary pooling will take the outer product of the input factors, and uh, this product will be the input to the sampling operator, and the output will be the final output for the feature fusion. And the second, Type of uh, of 
a trans feature fusion technique is adaption based pooling or the transformer by pooling. So um, basically the, the transformer had to know the transformer has some advantages uh, on a parallel processing and it can attend um, each input cycle to the whole input sequence. So we treat each input input token as uh, the output vector from each embedding encoding branch and the outputs will be concatenated into the final output vector. Okay, so let's move on to the second component for our proposed solution, which is anomaly detector. So we discussed about the motivation for anomaly detector. So you know, the BIS confidence predictor is also a neural network model and just is a vulnerable to, to the anomaly, to the outlier input. That is, uh, it can uh, predict well uh, on the, the, the data that is similar to the training data, but um, it may be fail when uh, we test with uh, anomaly data. So the so example here is uh, a neural network that trained on the, the map and if we fit the cat into this network, it will output a unreliable copy score, a very high copy score for this kind of input. So to overcome this problem, we we will have to design an approach to detect outliers. So this, this outlier detection will give us uh, an additional information to the main conformal predictor so that the conformal predictor can deal with this case of input. Okay, so for the normal detector, we use variation of our encoder VAE as a framework because VAE is a very common framework for anomaly detection. And to, uh, we use VAE to detect the abnormal or the input data. So to you know that generative model such as VAE uh, or VAN ha has trouble in uh, learning which high dimensional data. So we will represent each input document image by an image embedding vector that has a lower dimension. So in particular, we will train uh, an image encoder so that this encoder will encode each input image into the image embedding. So how to obtain this image encoder will be present in the next slide, but now we can focus on the VAE framework. So uh, each time we feed an input to the VAE, it will produce the reconstruction loss function, uh, so reconstruction loss and the higher the reconstruction mass is, the more anomalous the, the input data is. And so the reconstruction mass will be normalized into the range from 0 to 1 by this um, formula. And VAE will be trained by standard VAE mass that uh, consists of KL divergence and the reconstruction mass term here. Okay, so let's discuss about the image encoder that we mentioned before. So, firstly, the training data set, the, the training data set, the, the input image uh, will be classified into some uh, categories that based on the appearance of the layout uh, structure of the, the image. And then we train an image encoder uh, which has the CNN architecture. Here, the CNN architecture is a uh, mobile net, and we adopt a cheapness loss function to train this model. So uh, basically, the, the embedding of each image uh, from the same category tend to form a cluster in the embed, embedding space. So here we see the TSME visualization as a lot of embedding. Okay, so the next part of this presentation will be presented by action. After we have the uh, feature fusion and abnormally score, we will contact them into the single feature and feed forward to the two fully connected layer to present the final output. Uh, in, in our output, we use a cross entropy loss to uh, calculate the final result. And how about the cloud truth? Uh, in, this, in this model, we will uh, annotate the cloud truth as follows. Firstly, uh, the blue box represents the cloud truth bounding box for text line. And you know, in the left figure, red box uh, predict the box by documents information system. And if it's location match any cloud truth box and OCI text is wrong, we will consider as wrong. And we label for high status is zero or false. Another case when predicted box doesn't match any cloud truth. In the right figure, you, as you can see, uh, the label for high status bit is true if the predicted box match the OCI text 
if the bridge is not matched and the OCR text is true. Not, I also note that a box is considered to be matched with ground truth if I will a box is higher than a threshold. And uh, in our model, we choose the threshold is about 0 0.8. Uh, and then uh, we will, uh, here is uh, some of our basic tests that we use to evaluate the efficient of, mo of our models. First, uh, firstly, we will use uh, two private data sets of my company, which call in-house one and uh, in-house two. And uh, with the in-house one is the combination of our company data, which may be for training and testing purpose. It have uh, in training test, we have 835, but with uh, 535 augmented image. And in testing, we have uh, 338 files. Uh, in in-house mode, we have about 25 keywords that need to uh, predict with the my commentaries as both in the slide. And with in-house highs, in-house two, we has we only, only use it to uh, for testing. We use a uh, 68 files for checking with also 12 common trail keyword with my commentary that both uh, uh, to be fair for the evaluation task. We also use some uh, public data set which are SROIE and uh, CORD. Uh, we uh, split the training and testing data set of SROIE uh, 626 file and 341 file accordingly. Uh, in SROIE, the task is uh, to take the four keys in document, which are address, company, date, and total. And the, with the code data set, we only use for testing uh, with 100 files. And we also is 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 a receipt created from Indonesian shop and restaurant. And in this uh, code data set, we need to identify the total key uh, to uh, evaluate our effective model, evaluate our model effective. We also use uh, four baseline as follow. Firstly, is the softmax threshold, which combines both softmax probabilities from OCR and KD model using multiplication as formula in this slide. In uh, softmax, uh, next we use the softmax classifier model with multi-layer prediction is, um, is a learned classifier. After that, we use the temperature scaling uh, to, mm, and I know is the MC profile. Uh, yeah, uh, with about the evalu evaluation matrix, we use two kind of matrix, which are ECE and AUC. And with the ECE, ECE is the expected calibration error. And uh, I can describe it as follow. ECE is desirable for the for compute the gap distance between the accuracy of model and the confidence score predicted. And the gap of two matrix can help us estimate the performance of confidence predictor and actual accuracy of the system in practical situation. This we directly uh, respond to human intuition of model correctness likelihood. About the AUC, the AUC is a rare under the ROC curve. With ROC curve is a gap showing the performance of a classification model at various classification threshold. Uh, here is our reason. Here is the reason of our testing. Uh, as you can see, the we have uh, the reason of four of our baseline model and MCP. MCP is a multi-model classification predictor. I mean, we only use one brand multi-model conformal predictor to predict and high said it is a combination between MCP and uh, variation uh, abnormally detector. Uh, as you can see, our uh, high said it uh, achieved uh, state of the art in with compared with previous method. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, with the both the ECE and AUC, our high it uh, achieves state of the art with about uh, with lowest ECE and uh, the highest um, AUC, and it also have the gap about uh, ten about four to ten percent compared with previous method. Uh, the reason next is uh, our evaluation on the public data set, which are SROIE and CORD. Uh, as you can see, uh, in the public data set, our high set our multi-model conformal predictor continue is uh, is uh, similar to high risk score. And when we com compare multi-conformal predictor with the uh, with, with a variation or uh, anomaly detector, which call high set our model achieves the, the state of the art compared with previous methods with the gap about uh, 2% and uh, 
three percent within AOC score, and uh, about uh, zero point zero zero one quick now in the easy score of graph of graph. Uh, to more detail to evaluate our to evaluate our model, we also did some application study on SO, SRO, IE dataset. As you can see, uh, we try to apply the multi-model conformal predictor with the concatenation of picture and bilinear pooling picture and also combined with PCAB. Uh, as you can see, our, the multi-model, the MCP with bilinear pooling always have the result higher than the concatenation in normal method. And when we uh, combine the MCP bilinear pooling with VCP, VCAD, it continue to achieve higher score in AOC and lower score in ECE. And from all of the experience that I have analysis above, I can tell that uh, all of our high status model is achieved, uh, achieve, is achieved the state of the art compared with previous methods. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I can tell that oh, we also achieve the some of the achievement. Firstly, we have present our about a person high status as motivation design and a uh, current result on wakeful data set. And uh, the experiment result so that our model provides significant improvement compared to baseline in terms of confidence of accuracy relation. Uh, however, our model still have, our work still have remain challenge. Uh, we think that it seem not work well with learning from highly unbalanced data. data. Uh, I was, and also the combination of features still one of our challenge. And also the upper limit of anomaly data on its distribution data also the remaining challenge. Uh, in the future direction, we would like to extend our work to confident model to other publication and support the human in the loop processing flow. And uh, yeah, that's all of our presentation today. Thank you for your listening. And uh, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to uh, contact us. Thank you for listening.